What's poppin' people? My name's Haligonia, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing off my latest plugin, Memleak version 1.1. Let's get into it. So starting off here, we have Memleak just applied to a layer in a 1080p composition. There are some parameters here now. You can see we have size and bit depth, which affects the style. If we move the size slider around, you can see that changes how large the block of memory that Memleak is internally allocating is. And that can, uh, when it's really low, give you these types of effects with really large pixels. And when it's a lot higher, you see a lot more detail. And then here with the style or bit depth, we can change between 8, 16, and 32 bits per channel, which I've given some creative names of zesty, cloudy, and tripping. And these give quite different results, depending on which one you choose. And as always with Memleak, the output that you see will change every time you use it, because it's showing unallocated memory from your computer as if it were pixel data. And there will always be different unallocated memory available. So if you use it one day and then close After Effects and open it the next day, you'll get a completely different output. If you use it on Windows, you'll get a completely different output than if you use it on Mac. And if we interpret that data as if it were 8, 16, or 32 bits per channel, we get a completely different looking output. Now, if you do just render frame by frame, if we go here and I scrub along the timeline, we'll see a lot of frames that look very similar. And one way around this is by pressing spacebar, at least by default, to do a preview render of the timeline. And what that will do is it will render multiple frames simultaneously, and thus it can't allocate that same block of memory over and over again. So you get a lot more variety that way. Again, instead of scrubbing in the timeline frame by frame, if you just press spacebar to render, you'll get a lot more variety. And if you have a bunch of cached frames, as I do here, that you don't quite like, you can get rid of those by going Edit, Purge, All Memory and Disk Cache. And that will get rid of all those cached frames, and now we can go through and render some new ones. So I'm just going to hit Spacebar here with the work area set to a few seconds and let it render out. So I've rendered out a small area here in the work area with the 16 bits per channel cloudy style selected. And due to a quirk of the way that After Effects interprets 16 bits per channel values can often look a little dark. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer and add brightness and contrast. And if we find a representative frame here, you can see maybe just turning up the brightness will help. The reason I'm doing this on an adjustment layer is because if I did it right on the same layer, it would delete the frame cache and it would have to re-render all of those frames, which I don't want to do. So I can just cache the work area now. And that looks pretty cool. So now that I have this rendered out, I'd like to show just a few ideas of what you can do. On an adjustment layer, I'm going to add my other effect pixel fan. Maybe we can throw some mask on that adjustment layer, set the mode to none, and then set that to the path and pixel fan, original frame mode, increase the stroke length. And I'll just take in these edges. I think probably a, a circular mask would look a little bit better here. Grab the ellipse tool, just add something there. Set that as the path in pixel fan. Again, original frame mode. And set the mask to none. Now we get some really cool warping right up to the edges of the frame. To improve performance of pixel fan, I'm just going to lower the resolution. For Memleak, the resolution of the layer doesn't actually matter. It's going to be scaled based on the size parameter. But pixel fan does tend to perform better at lower resolutions. However, because Memleak generates something new every time, we have got a different output here. And it's not exactly what I'm looking for at this time. So I'm going to try changing the style 
to 8 bits per channel. I think that's pretty cool. And if we enable the adjustment layer with pixel fan on it again, now we can see this cool effect. Maybe if I turn up the scale a little bit, could add a bit of a scale gradient, maybe disable that brightness adjustment layer. I think that's pretty cool. Maybe we can try adding one more thing. Pixel Sorter 3. I think that could be pretty cool. All I'm going to do is just adjust these threshold values here. Do we get something that looks pretty cool? I like that. Render that out, and there we go. In just a few seconds, adding some random effects. I've managed to turn the original output from Memleak, which again was this pretty cool and a completely new and unique glitch look. Now if you like the output that you've got from Memleak, you're going to want to render it out as soon as possible because every time you use Memleak it produces a different output and so if it's producing something you like and it's cached as you can see by this green bar on the timeline, you'll want to render it out and then re-add it to the comp so that it looks the same from now on. So to do that I can just go composition, add to render queue, I want to make sure we choose the same downsample factor as we had when we were previewing. So for me, I was using quarter, so I'll add that. Maybe I'll turn up the bit rate a little bit. And I'll just save it to my desktop. Now if I drag that in and scale it up, and then set the sampling mode to this pixelated one, and we'll set the resolution to full. Now we're getting the same output as we did before, but it won't be different the next time we open After Effects because we've rendered it out. So one last thing I want to show you. If you do set the size too high, sometimes, depending on what memory is available on your computer, Memleak won't be able to find a large enough block to fill the frame, and you'll get this message. You can try scrubbing the timeline or purging the cache, but probably you'll have to just reduce that size parameter. And if you reduce it enough, you will start to get an output again. For some reason, I find once you've gotten that message for the rest of the session, it can be hard to push the size parameter super high. I don't know if this is just me seeing something that isn't there, but like earlier, I was able to get 800. But then once I went to 1,000, now it won't go past 600. If that happens to you, you can just restart After Effects and you should be able to push it pretty high again. I believe that's everything from me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to open a support ticket on AE Scripts or reach out on my Discord. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do. Thank you.